Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, RAF grounds many World War II aircraft due to possible engine problem. Editorial board accuses FAA Air Canada of hindering a KSFO investigation. Bombardier Global 7000 suffers engine failure during test flight. Hello, I'm Lara Hudson. It's August 24th and this is Airborne Unlimited. The UK's Royal Air Force has grounded several World War II aircraft over concerns about the engines installed on the airplanes. The RAF grounded several aircraft associated with this Battle of Britain Memorial flight. Four Spitfires, two Hurricanes, and a Lancaster bomber have been grounded until an issue with the engine aboard one of the Hurricanes can be checked out. The BBMF airplane had been scheduled to fly at Biggin Hill Festival of Flight near London, an Eastbourne International Air Show in East Sussex. A public display at Weymouth Carnival was also cancelled. The RAF said that the issue with the Merlin engine is still under investigation, and it was not known when they would be again cleared for flight. A routine inspection has highlighted a fault with one of the Merlin engines in a Hurricane aircraft, the spokesman said. We are currently investigating the fault and as a precaution, flying of Merlin engine-powered aircraft has been paused. The BBMF has six Spitfires, two Hurricane MK2Cs, the Lancaster, a C-47 Dakota, and two Chipmunks in airworthy condition in its collection base at RAF Coningsby in Lincolnshire. The editorial board of East Bay Times newspaper has accused the FAA and Air Canada of dragging their feet in the investigation of an incident July 7th at San Francisco International Airport. An Air Canada A320 lined up to land on a taxiway where four aircraft were lined up waiting for takeoff and initiated a go-around below 60 feet of altitude. But the editorial board says that the Air Canada and the FAA have slowed the pace of the investigation which led to the cockpit voice recorder data to be erased. They also say that the Canadian pilots were never tested for drugs and alcohol. According to the editorial, the FAA only required one controller to be on duty at the time that the incident occurred, and that the agency did not notify the NTSB about the incident until more than 24 hours after it happened. That allowed Air Canada to operate the aircraft three more times before the investigation began and the subsequent flights caused the CVR to override the recordings made during the incident flight multiple times. Former NTSB Chairman Jim Hall reportedly told a reporter for the paper that the investigation should have begun immediately due to the potential for disaster caused by the mistake. After the break, the Bombardier Global 7000 program has a hiccup. Explore no limits flying in the FAA certified Sea Ray Amphibious LSA. One of the top three best selling LSAs in the U.S., Progressive Aerodyne Sea Ray comes equipped with a Rotax engine and exhibits extraordinary handling on land, water, and in the air. Check it out at www.searay.com. In collaboration with NASC, introducing Sonics Aerospace, bringing you the Taros Group 4 UAS, the redesigned Tiger Shark Block 4, and the Subsonics Twin Jet UAS, all derived from flight proven manned systems, not concepts, real aircraft. More at sonicsaerospace.com. Welcome back. One of three test aircraft for Bombardier's Global 7000 program suffered an engine failure at 41,000 feet on August 15th, but the crew was able to land the aircraft safely on the remaining engine at Wichita's Eisenhower International Airport. The aircraft was one of three test aircrafts in the Global 7000 test fleet, undergoing flight testing at the Bombardier Flight Test Center at the Wichita Airport. According to the report, the plane was about 156 nautical miles west of the airport on August 15th when it experienced an in-flight flameout of the right engine following high vibration and high inter-turbine temperature readings. Bombardier said that the pilots followed standard procedures and returned to base uneventfully. The Global 7000 will be the first to fly with GE Aviation's new Passport turbine engine, 
which is also assembled in Kansas. It was certified by the FAA in April 2016. Bombardier and GE have determined that the root cause of last week's reported occurrence was an isolated event, Bombardier said in a statement posted on its website. The Global 7000 Aircraft Program's flight and ground test campaigns continue on track for entry into service in the second half of 2018. It's Thursday, which means that it's time for an Aero Community Update, highlighting news and information about the incredible people and organizations that populate the Airborne Partnership Initiative behind Airborne Unlimited. We've been hinting for quite some time about a program we've been working on for several years, currently nicknamed Aeroverse. Over 20 years ago, ANN upset the aviation media business with the first 24-7, 365 days a year, real-time news service. And via a number of innovative and disruptive programs, we introduced the aviation business to podcasting, daily aviation video features, over 350,000 stories, live aviation video coverage, and so much more. In short, we revolutionized aviation media. So take us seriously when we say we're about to get radical. What we're doing is a combination of efforts, a radical upgrade in the technical capabilities and features brought to aviation news, new distribution plans, serious efforts at rebuilding the aviation community, and a host of news and feature programs that all combine to aggressively raise the bar in a way that ensures the aviation world gets educated, entertained, empowered, and engaged. We're backed by an impressive advisory group of aviation experts who will be supporting and critiquing our efforts, while the use of the most disruptive technologies and programming efforts so far seen in the Aeroverse should go far to help the aviation world regrow and regroup into a force to be reckoned in an industry healthy enough to build a new future. More info to come. After these messages, Sonics gets some new insurance options. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. The Bristel Light Sport Aircraft is what you are looking for. The Bristel is wider than a Cirrus, faster than a Skyhawk, offers more storage than a Husky, and comes standard with Garmin Avionics. So what are you waiting for? Visit Bristel.com to find out how you can get into a Bristel today. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. Sonics Aircraft has disclosed that the First Flight Insurance Group has approved Sonics, WayX, and Wanix aircraft models for their USUA insurance program. The USUA insurance program offers third-party liability insurance and accepts orientation flight time in type with regular pilots or time in similar handling aircraft. The program has an affordable fixed annual premium and there is no charge for a second pilot on the policy and no charge for adding additional insured landowners. Mesa Airlines flight attendants represented by the Association of Flight Attendants, CWA, have announced a tentative agreement with Mesa Airlines management. The four-year agreement would cover over 1,100 flight attendants and includes economic and quality of life gains. The deal was reached with the assistance of the National Mediation Board. An anonymous donor has contributed $10,000 to the Greater Cincinnati Chapter of the Tuskegee Airmen to establish a new aviation program for kids in the inner city. The chapter will reportedly use the money to start about a dozen youth in the region to begin to teach them what they need to know to be able to fly an airplane. A grand opening event was held for a new hangar at General Atomics Aeronautical Systems' new hangar at the Grand Sky Unmanned Aircraft System Business Park near Grand Forks, North Dakota. The event included a ribbon-cutting ceremony to commemorate the completion of GAASI's new flight test and training center hangar. 
Fernando de Carlotte has been named Chief Executive Officer of BRS Aerospace, the world's leading designer and manufacturer of whole aircraft parachute systems. He was previously Senior Vice President of Engineering for the company based in South St. Paul, Minnesota. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. The NBAA has issued a notice to its members making them aware that the FCC Enforcement Bureau is working with the FAA to investigate the misuse of and harmful interference to the Mayday frequency of 121.5 MHz, says Sarah Wolf, NBAA's Senior Management of Security and Facilitation. As all pilots know, this frequency is dedicated to aviation emergencies and distress, she said. The FAA constantly monitors 121.5 MHz for actual distress calls and emergencies. In an FAA report of non-emergency use of the frequency, which impedes its ability to monitor it, led to the first FCC Enforcement Advisory of the Year on August 8. The advisory made clear that the FCC Enforcement Bureau will aggressively enforce the rules related to aviation radio operations to ensure the integrity of safety and distress frequencies that are vital to safeguarding lives and property. Pilots who need to communicate air-to-air -air should select frequencies like 122.750 MHz, which are dedicated to this purpose. Well, that's our program for today. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily Monday through Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe and do check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. See you tomorrow.